I love the way they sort of hit, hit the point, don't they? I mean, it's like, pow! <laughs> I love that. Uh, great to see you this morning, uh, really. Um, it, it is an encouragement to, to all of you and to me to be together. And I know there might be some people online as well. God bless you. Uh, I, I um, <laughs> as, uh, as Nate said earlier, we're talking about Stephen today. And apparently, um, he let the cat out of the bag because it didn't, didn't end well for him. But, <laughs> but I, uh, last night, uh, something made me smile last night. So I worked in the morning here at the church, then went home, cut the grass, and I have a confession to make. I hate cutting the grass. Some people just love to cut the grass. I hate it with a passion. Um, so anyway, I, I cut the grass, and it took me, you know, I think three and a half hours maybe. No, two and a half, three hours. Because it's a push mower, and I have a, you know, it, so it takes me a long time. Anyway, enough complaining, right? So um, I'm cut, I, after cutting the grass, um, I started to, to make dinner. And then I decided I am going to just relax. And one way I relax is by watching documentaries. I'm the biggest nerd or probably here. Okay, I, I love watching science documentaries. And once you know it, I'm, I'm watching a documentary about the, the universe and, you know, this big telescope they sent out into space. And then they mentioned something. They mentioned Stephens Quintet. I'm like, Stephen, you know, of course, we're talking about Stephen, so my, my ears perked up. Like, wait, Stephen's Quintet, what is that? And it's a group of galaxies, they call it a cluster of galaxies, that are very, very close to one another. And there's five of them, technically four. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into the science of it, but they call it Stephen's Quintet, five galaxies. And I, it made me smile because I actually had, have five things to tell you about Stephen today. So, so, so it was one of those, like, okay, Lord, yeah, five things, Stephen's quintet. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Because as I was watching, I started thinking about the actual text. And the text is found in Acts chapter 7. And uh, it's, it's in the end of the chapter, Acts chapter 7, verse 54 till the end. So it's only like, what, six verses or so. But there's five things in here that I want us to, to cover today about Stephen, about what he did in those moments. So here's the, here's the context. The church is growing. They're having a great, great engagement um, people are coming to, to faith in the Lord Jesus. And uh, then there was a group of seven individuals that were uh, appointed to do a little bit of, of uh, uh, logistical help. And there was additional leaders in addition to the apostles that managed the food distribution and the welfare of the, of the church. And one of those individuals was Stephen. Well, Stephen, uh, apparently he did miracles, he, did, uh, he preached uh, about the Lord Jesus. And when I say preach, don't think of him in standing like this. It's really when, when, when he's preaching, he's, he's engaging with people and he's talking and he might be in the marketplace. And it's like, hey, have you, have you guys heard about this, this Jesus of Nazareth? You know, he, let, let me tell you. And, and you, you know, so he was talking to the Jews. So, and, and then... At one point, as he's talking like this, those individuals are beginning to argue with him. And it becomes contentious. To the point where instead of, you know, having an, a, a nice disagreement, they actually bring him up on charges to their Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin. So the Supreme Court, what they did, they actually produced false witnesses. So imagine this. Imagine that... that, that you know, the, the prosecution brings his witnesses that are going to give false testimony. And that's what happened. And in that trial, he gives this beautiful long sermon, which, by the way, I read the entirety last week. So if you are um, on YouTube, you probably 
see it there. If you're not on YouTube, you haven't subscribed yet. Dan will tell you about that later. But, but right after that, right after his big sermon, this is what happens. And I'm going to start reading in verse 54. And it says, so this is uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 54. And it says, when the members of the Sanhedrin, that's the Supreme Court, heard this, his sermon, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. Do you get it? Hey, somebody's furious. <laughs> but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The Son of Man was a title that Jesus applied to himself. And it's actually that title is found in the prophecies in Daniel. It's the Son of Man and it's the figure of God himself. So if you were in the ancient Jewish context and you referred to yourself as the Son of Man, what you're saying is, I am God. That's the context here. So he's saying, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. I think sometimes we read the scriptures without the right passion. I think we need to read the scriptures at times with the right passion that was pregnant in the text. They covered their ears, yelling at the top of their eyes. They rushed, dragged him out. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the witnesses... These are the false witnesses. Laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. By the way, this young man named Saul is the future Saint Paul. It's the Apostle Paul. So apparently he was quite young when this happened. And by the way, you realize that these false witnesses, they would not just leave their coats with anybody. So they must have known him. He must have had an in with the Supreme Court somehow. Well, of course, he actually studied under one of the most famous teachers. He was at the Harvard University at the time. <laughs> no, he wasn't at Harvard. He was studying with the famous teacher. So there they are, the false witnesses put their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. Well, of course, if you're going to take stones, have you ever chucked big stones at for, for a, a long time, you get tired. So they took their outer garment. Here, you hold this. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Poetic language for he passed away. So that's the text. This is the text, and I believe this is the right passion with which to look at this text. So I want to show you five things about Stephen. Five things that when you look at him, you go, oh my Lord. Okay, so here's the first thing. The first thing is in the midst of these furious angry individuals it says but Stephen they're furious they're gnashing their teeth but Stephen Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit full of the Holy Spirit in the midst of all that anger He's full of the Spirit. And when he was full of the Spirit, the second thing that he did, he looked up. He looked up. And, and, and I don't know if he looked up like physically up 
or he looked in a way that he understood the spiritual realm. And in that spiritual realm, he could see the glory of God. You know, when you talk about the glory of God, it's, it's the, the glory of God in, this, in the scripture is, is described as this weight. It's almost like when you go to the, the Grand Canyon, you go, whoa. It's, oh my gosh. Or you go stand at the foot of this crazy mountain and you go, oh. it, it is this, this amazing, awesome, overwhelming weight of beauty so he looked up to heaven in the midst of these people just you know being, being very furious and instead of him being furious back he's full of the spirit and what does he do he sees beyond what his eyes are giving the information to him of these angry angry people and instead of seeing them he looks into the heavenly realms and he sees the glory of God. And when he does that, everything around him changes. All right, so what does he do? Well, he's it, 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 like, oh my gosh, there's the glory of God. The first thing he says, hey, everybody, look. Stop being so, so uh, blind. Stop being so hard-hearted. Look. So he sees the glory. So he immediately lets everybody know, guys, look. And he says, look, I see. I see, I see the, 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 the God of the universe, the most high God. And, and Jesus himself is right there. Now, instead of repentance, they actually brought <laughs> the intensity higher. Because that point there, they couldn't handle it. So they started yelling at the top of their lungs. I have actually seen this, this kind of anger, this kind of rage. You know, a person, you know, being, doing some demonstration. And they were, and somebody came to, to that person that was doing all sorts of demonstrations. And, and then this, this person, a very calm voice, said, well, why are you demonstrating? And, and the more this person talked calmly, the more this person's voice increased. And the calmer the person challenged their thoughts and their belief, the louder the voice got to the point where there was this rage in their eyes. There was just, not from this earth, just rage, uncontrollable rage. And that does take place, by the way. Sometimes when we show people the glory of God, depending how much bondage they're in in regards to the evil one, the evil one will stir rage to the point where it's uncontrollable. And, and, and at that point, you would imagine that, that okay, so he's... He's, he's there. He's filled with the Spirit. He looks up in the heaven. He, he, he shares with others, guys, this is what I see. And you expect him to retaliate somehow. Or to, to say, Lord, I'm such a victim. Look what they're doing to me. I mean, by this time, their rage is such that they, they're stoning him. There's, there's, there's things coming his way. And what does he do? He, he prays. So instead of feeling like the victim and saying, Lord, look at me. Look what they're doing to me. Can't you? Why don't you intervene? Why don't you, why don't you take care of these? Why don't you just destroy these people? He actually prays, Lord, receive my spirit. I mean, you don't pray, Lord, receive my spirit unless you trust whoever you're praying to. It's a time of, I'm going to trust you with my life. 
I love when kids look up to the, the parents, you know, and they, they do things. And Why? Because they trust them. Andrew agrees, by the way. You're, you all know that, right? That's what he's doing. He's preaching with me here. All right? But look at that situation of a child trusting their parents. If a stranger would come in and grab the little one by the hand and try to run off, what do you think he would do? No, I'm not going to trust myself into the hands of anybody else. But I do trust myself in the hands of my parent. Stephen did that. He said, I am entrusting my spirit into your hands. How? You're being stoned. And he's like, Lord, whatever path I'm going through, I am going to put myself in your hand. This is a prayer of trust. This is a prayer of faith. And quite honestly, friends, this is a prayer of hope. I am putting myself in your hands. That's where my hope is. <laughs> Not with these guys that are trying to kill me. And then the last thing that he does as stones are coming his way, he drops to his knees. Why? He probably got hit hard. Probably got hit hard. He's probably in pain. I won't be surprised if there's blood. But what does he do? Lord, bring fire and destroy these people. <laughs> no, 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 no. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He's full of the Spirit. He looked up to heaven. He sees Jesus himself. He shows others. People, look. Look to the one that can, can resolve this eternal damnation issue. And then, and then he says, I'm going to trust him. Receive my Spirit. But Lord, you know what they're doing? <laughs> no, don't. It's wrong, but don't hold it against them. Don't hold this sin against them. You know who else said that? Yeah. When he was on the cross, he said the exact same thing. And you know where we know that? From the Gospel of Luke. You know who wrote Acts? Luke. So what Luke is doing here is like, look, you see what, you see what Stephen is doing? He's doing the exact same thing that Jesus did. So Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, and then when he wrote the, the book of Acts, he's like, and, and, and this man, this man Stephen, in the midst of his persecution, is doing what Jesus did when he was on the cross. He's offering mercy, not vengeance. Mercy, not vengeance. Ouch. Ouch. How? Only supernaturally. Honestly, I, it's, you've got to be a superman to do that. But not a superman in terms of, oh, I am superman. No. It's supernatural grace ought to flow. The Holy Spirit is in him. It's full of the Spirit in order to be able to offer mercy to the ones that do not deserve mercy. All right, so what's our application? What do we take away with us? What can we in our 21st century look to and say, wow, I mean, I don't know, in America, there's no stoning yet. Um, there's, there's no stoning of Christians, as far as I know. But in other places there are. So what do we take for us? Well, I, I would like to offer Three things that I believe we can begin to apply in our lives today. The first one, I want to cover this full of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Is it just like a, one of those forces? The force is upon you now. Go and do stuff. No. I, I want you to think in terms of the being full of the Spirit in two ways. Uh, sort of like inside and outside. So, so to keep that in image, inside and outside, from the outside perspective, the, the Spirit, being full of the Spirit, it's as if you take on and you put on a new garment. I put this on. And I put it on as a garment. And there's symbolism behind what I'm wearing today. And yeah, sometimes I wear a 
a yellow vest, construction vest, because it signifies something. And, and it signifies that we work, we, we, we do things, we, our faith is something that's active. And, and, and you take on, and the, 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 the being full of the Spirit is this image of putting on a garment. It's an intentional covering. Now, on the inside, I want you to think in terms of food. I think we're getting close to lunchtime. Are you guys hungry yet? All right. Should I make you hungry? Talk about some delicious food. Some chicken, steak, ooh, with mashed potatoes or ham and rolls. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Right? And you're probably thinking of that because your probably stomach is going, ooh, ah, uh, ah, I'm, I'm a little hungry. You know, he's making me hungry now. What's going on? Well, I'm making you hungry because you're not full yet. But imagine that minutes before I'm talking about food, you just had a feast, a delicious feast. And after that delicious feast, I, I, I'm going to start talking about food. And be like, oh, pastor, don't talk about food. I am so full. Full of the Spirit is a little bit like that. It's the feast that, that you're like, oh, I have I have everything. I am so content. Oh, I am so full right now. Well, how about this delicious pie? Oh, no, no, no. I want nothing. I am so full. And being full of the Spirit, my friends, is like that. See, because when you are full of the Spirit, nothing else can fit in. So you're full of the Spirit, and like, I am so full. Well, how about a little bit of temptation? How about a little bit of pride? How about a little bit of, 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 of pornography? Let's, let's, let's throw in some gossip. Let's throw in... The, oh, I, can't, I couldn't. I, I could not even... No, I am so full. You are full of the Spirit. There's a satisfaction. No need for anything else. If you are ever tempted to do something that you know you probably shouldn't do, do this. Open your scriptures. Start reading it. All right? Call a friend. Start talking about, I don't know, Psalm 23, whatever, whatever you want to talk about in scriptures. And then try to do that sin. You couldn't. <laughs> Unless you really, really are rejecting what the Lord has, in which case, is he really your Lord? <laughs> but the temptation diminishes to the point of, oh, I'm not interested in that anymore. Why? Because I'm full. So being full of the Spirit is something that you put on, and it's a filling of our hearts and minds with Him. See, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is a person. And I know sometimes, you know, in our mind we think, Spirit, okay, ghost, you know, it's like this mist. No. Technically, the scripture indicates that he is a person. So how can it be filled with a person? Well, thank God that we have examples for that. I'll tell you. When I started dating my wife, Jenny, by the way, she's traveling today, so, you know, that's why she's not here. Right? When I started dating my wife, I, I, I was full of Jenny. I, was, I wanted her and her only, so any other girl... I was no longer interested. You see how a person, you can be full of a person? I was full of Jenny. I, I, I didn't want any other girl. I wanted her. So the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit can be like that. So what we can take today is being full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the other thing that we, I think we can get and, and take for us today is to do what, what Stephen did, he looked up. See, when you look up, uh, before looking at the people, you'll see them differently. So look up before looking at people, and everything will change. You're going to see them with, with God's glory in mind, with His presence around you because let me tell you god's presence 
changes the way you are present with others. The way you interact with others, even the annoying people. So in difficult circumstances, in those times when we're like, I am at the end of my rope. I, I am at the end of my rope. I'm just going to explode. And I know I will probably say a few unchristian things. And I'll probably do some unchristian uh, Christian things. And I'll probably uh, uh, just, Lord, protect me from thinking, doing, saying what you don't want me to do. Okay, well, if you don't want to do that, look up first. Look up before you look at people. And see that your difference in the way you interpret other people's actions changes you. Changes you. That person which is causing you harm, like Stephen, is no longer the person that you want dead. People say, well, uh, Pastor, does, does road rage in, included in that? I'm like, oh, yeah, I think so. They just cut you off. And, and, you know, after they cut you off, they flipped you off. Like, ah, oh, Lord, where? Strike him dead. <laughs> well, maybe not strike him dead, but maybe just give him a flat tire. Where are the cops? Come on, get him. Well, even in road rage, you know, you got to look up before you look at people. So be filled with the Spirit. Look up first, see God's glory, and then his presence will make you be different, present with others. He'll make you be more like him rather than the flesh. And here's the third one. S Steve himself, um, he was not only proclaiming the message, but he was the message. So my friend, we are the message and the messengers of God. We've got to show others God's glory. And it's hard to show God's glory if you are full of yourself. So the first thing we got to do is got to show God's glory to others. And then we live in the hope and trust. Lord, I give everything to you. My heart, my soul, I put in your hands. And then after that, mercy. We offer mercy. I tell you, mercy is not... Um, mercy is difficult to offer until you experience mercy yourself. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> if, if you've ever lived only in the lap of luxury, you do not understand what it's like to be homeless. If you were ever homeless or know somebody that was homeless and you get to know them and they become, in a sense, a friend, being homeless or interacting with a homeless person gives you a softer heart towards another homeless individual. The, the, it's unscientific, but people have shown how those who are homeless are more generous than the people on Wall Street. Those who have felt what it's like to need mercy, they will be more merciful towards others. Jesus put it this way. He said, those who are forgiven much they will love much. So mercy is one of those things where if, if it's hard for you to be mercy, merciful, that's, that's probably a vision adjustment that needs to ta take place because you need to see God's glory. And once you see God's glory, you realize where you are not like him. And therefore, when he shows you mercy, you realize, oh my goodness, I've been offered so much mercy. By the way, do you understand what mercy is? Mercy versus grace. So mercy is when you go before the judge and the judge says, guilty! And say, so, oh no, judge, have mercy, have mercy. Don't punish me like I deserve. So mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace, on the other hand, is getting something that you don't deserve. 
like if I was to, you know, bring a raspberry pie to my enemy, they don't deserve that raspberry pie. That's grace. It's different. So offer mercy. We are the message. We are the messengers. Okay, so what do we do? All right, if, if, if we have to be full of the Spirit, and then if we have to look up before we look at people, and then if we are the messengers and the message themselves, right, if we are both of those, what can we do? Well, the first thing I'm going to suggest is where you look matters. So start where you look. Let me give you an example. Social media. Is social media helpful to you? Does it help you uh, become a more devoted follower of Jesus? Does social media give you patience? Does social media give you a, a, a way where you look at individual and say, oh, I love people so much more now? I, I, am, I am filled with God's grace because I've looked at Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and whatever else you all look at. I doubt it. Some of you are going, are you kidding me? Every time I'm on social media, my blood boils. All right. So, if I take a hammer and I go like this on my head and it hurts, what do I have to do? Stop. So, if social media gives you headaches... It makes your blood boil. Perhaps that's not where you should look. Where you look matters. See, Stephen looked up. Perhaps we ought to look up. So maybe instead of social media, maybe we say, you know what, I'm going to put, put away my social media and I might open my Bible actually. Yeah, but pastor, sometimes I don't understand what it says. Okay, so what? Read it anyway. Fine. No problem. Oh, by the way, we have a Bible study on Wednesday night. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you know, hey, let's, let's start talking about that. Nobody's going to be a scholar overnight. I'm not a scholar overnight. So there are some places in here I go, Lord Jesus, I have no idea how you're planning to do this, but I see it here. Pastor, how will that happen? I have no idea. Well, I just supposed to be like, you know, a theologian or something. Well, I am, but you know what? If we all understood the mysteries of God... The infinite mysteries of God. Would he really be a God? No. So maybe what we ought to do is stop looking, stop looking at social media and the news and everything that makes our blood boil. And maybe we ought to say, you know what? Instead of uh, Instagram and Facebook, I might. And by the way, this last week as I'm preparing this message, guess who's on his phone Sometimes losing track of time because I was on Instagram. <gasps> I was like, oh my God, have I just spent 45 minutes looking on Instagram? How? It feels like 10 minutes. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, I'm doing it. Protect me from it. Where I look matters. So that's your first action item. Where you look matters. Here's another action items which i already mentioned the bible study you can do it it's okay we have people that have never been to a bible study that are showing up and that's cool it's the bible study can serve as a reminder to you it's a, it's a meal stop remember when i talked about the food and you're not going to be hungry for the bad stuff if you're full with the good stuff so the Bible study can be a meal stop for you. Come on in. Wednesday at 6.15. Bring meal if you want. You can eat while we, while we talk. By the way, I can't wait until the basement is down so that we can actually begin uh, children's ministry on Wednesday nights also. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, but right now we don't have a place to because the basement is not done. All right, enough of that. So where you look matters. The Bible study can be your meal stop. Here's the third thing. Pray for opportunities to offer mercy. Pray for opportunities to offer grace. These bags that are here on the end of your pews, these are the essential bags that we made together, um, and they are all the essentials that somebody 
who is in hard times could need. Take one with you. Take one with you. And, and pray for opportunities to give it away. Why not? Uh, maybe pray for an opportunity and then the courage. I was talking to somebody. like, well, I know sometimes I see a person and they're standing by the stoplight and, you know, they have a little sign that said, help me, whatever. But man, I would feel funny just opening my window and giving like, well, okay, so you have an opportunity. Got to answer that. But now you need the courage. <laughs> <laughs> need the courage to open your window. So I don't know if, you know, I'm doing this like it's a manual thing. Maybe, you, you know, I don't know. <laughs> right? Maybe don't open it all the way, you know. Just put it like. You understand. Pray for the opportunities to offer mercy. Grab an essentials bag. I have three in my car right now. The Lord hasn't given me any, anybody to give them to yet, but I'm praying for that. Take them with you. Take one or two. If you're going to Milwaukee, Delafield, Economawak, I've seen people there. Take one. We had a merchants meeting and, uh, you know, some people uh, that we, we hosted here, the merchants in Pewaukee, and they, they took the bags, some of them. We have plenty. Take one with you. So you will have the eyes to see the opportunity. Well, my friends, let me pray with you. And then after that, I'm going to have um, Dan come on up and tell us about the, uh, the church uh, happenings in, our, uh, in this week. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, please um, give us the eyes to see. Give us the, 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 the desire to look up and see your glory. Holy Spirit, please fill us so that we may be filled and full and not go after the bad meals for our minds and hearts. Father, I ask that you would give us the eyes to see opportunities to show grace and mercy. Even those people that are hard to love, give us the Holy Spirit within us so that we may love them like you do and not rely on our own understanding and the frailty of our human nature. I pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Dan?